The Al Usma's landing was a landing operation which took place on 8 September 1925 at Al Usma's by the Spanish Army and Navy and, in lesser numbers, an allied French naval and aerial contingent, that would put an end to the Rif War. It is considered the first amphibious landing in history involving the use of tanks and massive seaborne air support. Al Husmas is seen as a precursor of the Allied amphibious landings in World War II, and the first successful combined operation of the 20th century. The operations consisted in landing a force of 13,000 Spanish soldiers transported from Ceuta and Melilla by a combined Spanish French naval fleet. The commander of the operation was the then dictator of Spain. General Miguel Primo de Rivera, and, as the executive head of the landing forces at the beach of Al Husmas Bay, General Jose Sumjojo, under whose orders were two army brigades from Ceuta and Melilla, led by Leopoldo Saro Marin, and Emilio Fernandez Perez, respectively. Among the officers of the Ceuta Brigade, there was the then Colonel Francisco Franco who, for his leadership of the Spanish Legion troops in this action, was promoted to Brigadier General. Chapter 1 Background After the Battle of Annual in July 1921, the Spanish army was unable to regain control of the Central Rif region. It undertook a containment policy aimed at preventing the expansion of the rebel zone, executed by limited military actions of local nature. In parallel, the Minister of War ordered the creation of an inquiry commission, led by General Juan Picasso González, which developed the report known as Expediente Picasso. Political forces, public opinion, and the army were divided between supporters of leaving the protectorate and advocates of restarting the military operations as soon as possible. In September 1923, the coup of General Primo de Rivera occurred, who at first supported the abandonment of the protectorate, and withdrew a great number of isolated outposts from the inner region of Jibala to a line of strongholds linking La Roche, Tetuan, and Ceuta, known as Estella Line. A similar plan was drafted for a withdrawal from the regions surrounding Malia, but it was rejected by the majority of the officers in the Army of Africa. In 1925, however, and after new attacks by Obadel Krim that caused numerous casualties during the Spanish retreat from Zawan, Primo de Rivera became a strong supporter of a decisive offensive to defeat the Rifian leader and restore Spanish authority in the protectorate. Chapter 2 Planning In April 1925 a crucial event occurred, Obadel Krim, confident of his success against the Spanish, attacked the French zone of the protectorate. This opened the doors for a Spanish-French agreement to make a common front against the Rifians. To this end, in June 1925 the Madrid Conference took place, which set out the necessary actions. Among the agreements reached there were the plan for a Spanish landing on the Al Husmas Bay, with the cooperation and support of a combined air and naval Spanish-French force. Al Husmas, home of the Cabile of Beni Uriadal, to which Obad el Krim belonged, was the focus of the ongoing Rif Rebellion. All Spanish land operations, included the disaster of Annual in 1921, were aimed at the occupation of Al Husmas, but all of them failed, mainly due to overextended resupply lines. The first plans for a landing on Al Husmas dates back to 1913, devised by General Francisco Gomez Jordana. The operation initially proposed the landing of 18,000 men, although 13,000 would eventually be landed, to build up a base of operations in the area of Al Hosima, and deal with an estimated force of 11,000 Rifians. This operation was the first amphibious action involving Spain in the modern era, and posed a concern to the Spanish authorities. As if it was not enough, the terrain presented difficulties in performing the assault, besides being a well-known area for the Rifians. Aware of the risk, Primo de Rivera carefully designed the landing. The main amphibious craft to be used in the operation were no other than the surviving ex-lighters from Gallipoli, upgraded and armored in Spanish shipyards, where they were known as K-boats. The probable knowledge of the planned landing prompted Obad El Krim to fortify the area of the bay itself, placing artillery and mines along the shores. These circumstances forced the Spanish command to change the landing site, choosing Ixtain and Cibadilla Beach, 
west of the Bay of Alhosima, in a sector southwest of Los Frailes Point. The first major effort to seize the beachhead would be exercised in those beaches, once the landing would be successfully achieved, the second effort would be either in some of the adjacent creeks, like Cala del Quemado to the east, or a deepening and expansion of the initial beachhead, depending on the circumstances. Primo de Rivera and other high officers had conceived a massive landing of troops at Alhusmas as early as May, even before the July 1925 conference at Madrid between Felipe Petar and the Spanish dictator. The execution was postponed first to July, and then to September, in order to coordinate actions with the French military. Chapter 3 – The Amphibious Landings The supreme commander was Primo de Rivera, while the command of the ground forces was held by General José Sanjojo. The operational headquarters was established aboard the Spanish battleship Alfonso XIII, whose wireless capabilities transformed her in the main command and control center to coordinate the activities of ground, naval and air forces involved in the joint operation. The Alfonso XIII was assisted by her sister Jamie I and the French Paris in providing suppressive fire to the ground forces. They were joined by the Spanish cruisers Blas de Lezzo, Mendes Núñez, Victoria Eugenia, and Reina Hegent, along with the French Strasbourg and Metz. The Spanish fortress at Alhusmas Island, right in front of the bay, added to the heavy four-hour bombardment of the Rifian positions with 24 guns and howitzers and two mortars. There were 162 aircraft committed to support the ground troops, including Brigitte 19, Bristol F.2 and Pertes 15 of the Spanish Army, Machi M.24 and Supermarine Scarab seaplanes of the Spanish Navy, and French F.65 Farm and Goliath flying boats. The Supermarine Scarabs were embarked on the seaplane carrier Dedlow, while the Machi M.24s launched their sorties from Boareg, a lagoon south of Malia. Dedlow also carried an airship, used in the dual role of air support and artillery adjustment. Chapter 3 Section 1 – Preliminary Actions Chapter 3 Section 1 Subsection 2 Siege of Kudia Tahar Abdul Karim had received forehand information of the landings, since Spanish preparations at Ceuta and Malia were quite publicized. He then tried to deal a spectacular blow to the Spanish defenses around Tetuan, the Protectorate's capital, where he sent his second-in-command, former Raisuli supporter Ahmed El Hero. The plan consisted in breaking the Estela line in the mountain range just south of Tetuan, opening the door to the conquest of the city. The most advanced outpost in that region was the stronghold of Kudia defended by Aragonese and Catalan troops and supported by a battery of 75mm mountain guns. The assault began on 3 September 1925, and Kudia Tahar came under siege. The Rifian offensive forced Primo de Rivera to send back to Suta Legion and Regulars forces from Alhusmas. This troops, supported by 16 Brigade Sixes planes, relieved the Spanish position on 13 September. Chapter 3 Section 1 Subsection 3 Fleet Diversionary Operations in order to deceive Abdul Karim on the real landing point, both convoys shelled Rifian coastal redoubts, the Suta flotilla attacked Wedlau, mounting a diversionary amphibious operation, while the Malia flotilla, supported by French warships, fainted a landing in Sididris, both of them on 6 the September. The diversionary missions were repeated on 29 September on Rasafrau and Sididris, in support of the Spanish breakout from the landing area. Chapter 3 Section 2 – Beachhead The initial landings date in Alhusmas was originally set for 7 September, but poor weather, which scattered the K-barges, other amphibious craft and ships, resulted in a rescheduled for the following day at mid-morning. The spearhead of the invasion would be two brigades made of indigenous forces led by the Spanish Legion. Most of the infantry involved in the landing were actually indigenous troops. One of the forces of the two Prand assault would depart from Ceuta, the other from Malia. The troops eventually embarked on the overcrowded K barges, and had to endure several hours in these conditions after the operation was delayed. The Ceuta brigade was commanded by General Leopoldo Saro Marin, 
and the Malia Brigade by General Emilio Fernandez Perez. Each brigade was split into two columns. Suter Brigade's leading column, in charge of Colonel Francisco Franco, would be the first to land at 11.40 hours. The shoal allowed the K-barges to approach barely 50 MTS to the shore, casting doubts about the feasibility of Ixtain as a landing point. At Franco's initiative, the infantry waded the gap between the barges and the beach carrying their rifles and equipment over their heads. A company of light tanks, part of Franco's column and intended at this phase to support the troops and the supply area as mobile bunkers protecting the landing, was unable to leave the amphibious craft in these conditions. Caught by surprise by a landing too far to the west, Rifian reaction was slow and weak. Franco's forces, supported by the restless bombardment of the Spanish and French fleet and the combined air forces, moved eastward, securing Cibadilla Beach, which had been mined. The troops had a foreknowledge of the minefield thanks to a previous beach reconnaissance carried out on a motorboat by Captain Carlos Bodo, the naval officer who commanded the landing lighters. After a few hours, the Legion and the regulars had taken over the cliffs and slopes around the cove, capturing an enemy position with two heavy machine guns and a 75mm piece of artillery. The minefield at Cibadilla Beach was blown up by sappers at midday, giving the green light to a second wave of landings in this sector at 1300 hours. The tanks, 11 Renault Fort, landed on Los Frails Beach, further east, on the 9th of September. Other sources fix the date on the same the 8th of September at 1500 hours hours. The tanks were then driven across the coast to their camp between Cibadilla and Ixtain. They were deployed in forward positions to defend the beachhead and the recipe zone during the next two weeks, when the tanks launched their first offensive operations. The Malia Brigade did not land on Cibadilla Beach till the 11th of September, due to cross sea. They endured the first Rifian counterattacks on the heights of Moro Nuevo, in the eastern part of the beachhead, on the nights of 11 and 12 of September. The indigenous forces of the brigade, commanded by Colonel José Enrique Barella, bore the brunt of the Rifian assault, carried out by Abdul Karim's elected unit, the Juramentados. The second night Barella's men became short of ammunition, and had to rely on cartridges borrowed from the recently landed Marines company. The mortars of the brigade also played a key role in repelling the attacks. Further advances were delayed by a shortage of water. Bad weather hampered the supply mission of the water tanker vessels, while the Rifian artillery shelled the beachhead at night, to avoid being pinpointed by observation aircraft. Sea conditions also hindered the landing of mules, which were a key tool to transport supplies from the barges to the forward positions. One of the solutions found by the Spanish command to overcome the rough seas and get the supplies disembarked was the use of wooden floating docks, a crude precursor of the D-Day Mulberry Harbors. Chapter 3 Section 3 Breakout After a forward reconnaissance carried out by indigenous troops the previous day at dusk, some Hoho ordered a massive offensive on Rifian positions in the mountains surrounding the landing sites at 7 o'clock of the 23rd of September. Preceded by a massive barrage of naval and ground artillery, combined with airstrikes, the Renault FT tank company spearheaded the offensive. The Suter Brigade, split in the 6th and 7th Legion flags and supported by the tanks on their left flank, launched an assault on enemy positions in and around Mount Malmasy, while on the extreme left side of the beachhead, the Malia Brigade, led by indigenous troops, advanced toward Moro Viejo and the strategic cove of Cala del Quemado. Dot in the sector of the Suter Brigade, the initial attack of the indigenous forces was almost disrupted by the explosion of a massive mine. But the quick officer's reaction kept the offensive's momentum. Rifian resistance to the east was weak, and an envelopment maneuver of Colonel Godid's infantry and the tank's company on hostile redoubts, supported by a frontal assault of regulars and indigenous troops from Moro Nuevo, secured Moro Viejo and Cala del Quemado Cove by 9.45. Cala del Quemado replaced Cibadilla as the main logistics hub for the Spanish forces from there on. At 10.50, supported by an intense artillery barrage, the Suter Brigade, led by Colonel Franco, 
attacked the main Rifine positions in the high slopes of Mount Malmasy. The strongest resistance was found in a ravine, where a substantial number of Abdul Karim troops were trapped and eventually crushed by the combined assault of the 6th Legion flag on the center and the 7th Legion flag supported by the tanks company on the left flank. Dedlow's airship provided close air support to the assault on Malmasy, which fell to the Suta Brigade by the afternoon. The Spanish consolidated their positions by the 26th of September, the last time the beachhead was hit by Rifian artillery. A shortage of supplies and bad weather slowed down the offensive until 30 September. The next targets for the Suta Brigade were Mount Las Palomas and Mount Bayabar, while to the east, the Malia Brigade was bound to conquer Mount Taramara and Mount Taganin. Both brigades had taken all their objectives by 1300 hours. The 7th Legion flag and the tanks company swept the reed beds across the rivers Tixtert and Easley. On the 1st of October, the Malia Brigade crossed the river Easley into the Kabyle of Beni Ariagal, now supported by indirect fire from Al Husma's island. The Suta Brigade marched through the Amakran Massif, suppressing the last Rifian redoubts defending Axtia. The capital of the rebel republic fell the next day. Chapter 4 Aftermath. The Al Husma's landing was the turning point of the Rif War, and the beginning of the end of Abdul Karim's political influence. The decision of Primo de Rivera to halt the offensive operations until the next spring bore some criticism among military historians, but his intentions were to force the stunned Rifian leader into negotiations with Spain and France from a weaker position rather than risking further losses and casualties. The Spanish forces lost 24 officers. 132 European soldiers and 205 indigenous troops. There were 109 officers, 786 European soldiers and 1,080 indigenous troops wounded in action. Axtir, until then capital of the Republic of the Rif, was utterly plundered by regulars, legion soldiers and indigenous troops on the 2nd of October. 